intersection of planes. Use Gaussian elimination to determine the intersection, if any, of the planes given by following equations. Also provide geometric interpretation of the solution. Planes are x plus y plus 2z equals to 6, x minus y minus 4z equals to minus 2, 3x plus 3y plus 12z equals to 26. Well, this is a system of equations where we have three equations representing three different planes, right? Uh, Gaussian elimination method. Some of the students are not very familiar with it uh, and they continue doing solving systems of linear equations using the known techniques. I'll introduce them to the Gaussian elimination method which is a very simple and effective way of solving linear equations, okay? Or systems of linear equations, I should say, right? Now, so take it as an introduction to the Gaussian elimination method also, okay? Now, how do we do it? So I'll follow simple steps. I'm not explaining each and every part of it. But I am giving a very good overview of it in this video while solving this problem for you. Okay. Now what we do is we create a kind of a matrix which we call augmented matrix. Now what is this augmented matrix? So the augmented matrix is created by taking the coefficients of your variables in the equations. And I'll show you how. So what we do is this is our matrix. The coefficient of the first uh, linear equation plane is, I should say, these are three different planes, okay, which are represented by these equations. So the coefficient for the first plane is 1 for x, 1 for y, and 2 for z, which is equal to 6 on the right side. So what we do is, we write the coefficients first, and the coefficients are 1, 1, and 2, right? And then we draw a line here. So the coefficients of our plane represented by these equations will be written on the left side of this line, correct? And on the right side, we are going to write down the values, so which is 6, and then we close the matrix. So this could be written, in, and this is called the augmented matrix, okay? So let me write the name here. This is our augmented matrix. Where we have coefficients on the left side and on the right side of the line we have these constants to work with. Okay, The coefficients for the next plane are 1, minus 1, minus 4, which is equal to minus 2. Correct? And the third one is 3, 5, and 12, and we get 26 here. So that is the first step to write the augmented matrix. Correct? Just to remind you. On the left side of the line, we are writing the coefficients of our matrix, which are these coefficients of the variables. And on the right side, we are writing the values, okay? Now, what we do is, how to solve this? The, we can multiply these, these are rows, row 1, row 2, row 3. We can multiply these rows with any constant number, and then we can add the rows. The idea is to get zeros in these three corners, right? If we get zeros here in these three corners, then we know this is the value of z, and then we know x and y equals to something. We can solve for, because we know z from here, from here we can solve for y, and this gives us x, y, z equals to something, and then we can solve for x. So that is the process with which we'll, we'll go. So from here, what we will do is, that first, okay, let me use this and show you what we'll do. So what we will do is, we have to get this zero here. So to get zero, what can we do? We can multiply the first row by uh, 3, right? If I multiply the first row by minus 3 and then add this, then I get a 0 here, correct? So I will do that operation, okay? Now, okay. So what I'm trying to do is I'll write the first row as such, which is 1, 1, 2. And let me write the first row as such as 6, okay? Now, what I will do is I will multiply the first row by minus 3. So I'm just writing what I'm trying to do. So I'm doing minus 3 times r1 and then I'll add it to r3. 
plus R3. So I'll add it to R3 here, correct? And then write down my uh, third row. So if I do minus 3 and add, I get a 0 here, okay? Now minus 3 times 1 is minus 3 and minus 3 plus 5 will give me 2 here, right? Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6 and when I add this, I get a 6 here, right? Minus 6, 3 times 6 is minus 18 and when I add with 26, I get plus 8, right? I get it. Now, normally what we do is we'll write the second statement as such and in every step we will do a new step, right? Now, what I'm doing here is I'm combining the second matrix because I don't want to re rewrite all these things. So, what I'm doing here is the second matrix, right? What I will do here, the idea is now to get even this zero, right? As I said, the idea is to get zeros in the corner. So to get this as zero, we can see that if I add minus R1 with R2, I get a zero here, right? So I will do that here. So I will do here minus R1 plus R2. So what we can do in elimination method here, Gaussian elimination method, we can multiply rows with any number, right? And then we add the two matrices to get the zeros on the side. Okay. So when I do minus R1 plus R2, so minus of 1 is minus 1 plus 1 will give me 0 here, right? And let me remind you again, this should be done in the next step, okay? First you have to copy these numbers as such and then next step you do it. But I'm combining the two operations. It is not wrong, but uh, for your starter, it is benefit to do one step at a time, okay? Now, minus 1 minus 1 will give me minus 2. And minus 2 plus minus 4 will give me minus 6. And minus 6 minus 2 will give me minus 8. So I get this in my row 2. Okay. Now I think you will appreciate what we are doing. Gaussian row operations. These are called elementary row operations. Okay. So elementary row operations where we can multiply with one number, the whole row, and then add the two rows. Right. Now what next step is, as you can see, if I add these two, I get a zero, right? I get a zero here, right? So let's do that because the idea is to get these three zeros, correct? To get this zero, we have to add R2. Now this is R1, this is R2, and this is R3, correct? So now again, what I'm going to do is, I will do R2 plus R3. So I'll do R2 plus R3. It's good to write here what you're trying to do so that we can understand and then review if there's a mistake, right? So we'll copy R1 as such. 1, 1, 2. Now, now at this stage, I can do one more thing. Okay, let me do that. First, let me do R2 plus R3. That is, if I add these two, I get a 0 here, right? If I add minus 2 and 2, I get a 0 there also. If I add minus 6 and 6, I get a 0 here also. And if I add these two, I get a 0 here also. Is that okay? So I get three zeros in a row. Now, second step, which should have been my third step. Okay, the next step. I'm combining the operations. What I'm trying to do next operation is I can take out factor minus 2 from here, right? And then divide everything by minus 2 and write a simpler form. Correct? So if I take away since we can multiply by same number, we can divide also by same number, okay? The equation is equality, this equation, correct? In this equation, it remains same when we multiply or divide both sides by the same number, correct? That's the whole idea. So if I divide by minus 2, I get 0. Minus 2 divided by minus 2 is 1. Minus 6 divided by minus 2 is 3. And minus 8 divided by minus 2 is 4. And I'm writing the first equation as such. Okay, so I get this equation, rather my matrix, which actually gives me the solution, right? Now here, yeah, I have limited space and that's why I club two operations in each matrix. This should go to six steps for you, okay? Now, from here you can see, the last statement says 0, 0, 0 is equal to 0. You know this statement is always true, right? Think this is left side of your equality, correct? With coefficients x, y, these are coefficients of x, y, and z. Do you understand? If I write the equation 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals to 0, it is always true, right? So, from this equation, what we can say is, well, from here, I can say 
Let, now, this is always true, so we can eat, take help of our parameters, correct? Say z equals to 0, k, some constant k, because z is always true, correct? So, that is from this equation. Now, from the next equation, let me write this here now. Let me write this here on the right side and show you how we solve the equations and get our solution, okay? So, what I'm doing is now writing down my operations on this. So, from the last line, I can say z equals to k, right? So, I say z equals to k. This is from this line, okay? Now, this one. This is like coefficient of x, y, z equals to 4. That is how you have to read your equation, right? That's how in the first place we got our augmented matrix, correct? So, let's revert back to the equation. So, it says 0x plus y plus, so we get here y plus 3z equals to 4. Correct? Now, since z is a parameter k, we can write this here and solve for y. Correct? Therefore, we get y equals to 4 minus 3k. So, that's the value of y. Now, so we got two of our variables. Correct? Now, let's look into the first row. First row tells us x plus y plus 2z equals to 6. Correct? So, from here we can find what x is. So, x is equals to minus y. We will take it to this side. And minus of that means minus of 4 minus 3k. Correct? Minus 2 times z. So, we say minus 2 times. And what is z? z is k for us. And plus 6. So, that is the value of x for us. Let's open this bracket and solve for x. So, we get minus 4 plus 3k minus 2k plus 6, which is uh, minus 4 plus 6 is 2 and plus k. So, that's the value of x, right? So, in a way, we get a parametric solution of our equation, okay? So, let me write the parametric solution uh, of our equation, right? So, we let me write here. So, it's a line. Do you see that? It's a line. Which So, let me write parametric equation. Of the line, okay. It says x is equals to 2 plus k, y is equals to 4 minus 3k, and z is equals to k. So, this is the parametric equation. In the vector form, I can write this as line is equals to the point is x is 2, 4, 0, correct. And the parameter k is like plus k and for this is 1, for this y is minus 3 and for z it is 1. So, so that becomes our equation of the line. So, basically what we see is that these three planes represented by the given equation intersect in a line. Do you understand? And that's the line of intersection for the three plays. So, that's our solution, okay? Now, the second part of this is also provide geometric interpretation of the solution. Now, how can we show that? So, what is really happening here is like this. So, what is, we have three planes which intersect in a line. So, let me draw them for you here. So, we have a plane here, correct? And, uh, it is being intersected by another plane and the equation is of a line. So, the intersection is like a line here, correct? So, we get a plane here, which is, you can draw it like this. This is the second plane. In the third plane, we can draw or uh, intersect like this, right? We can draw like this. So, we, I'm trying to draw a line which is parallel to this, right? I'll get this extended. I hope you get it. 
So that's the third plane. Okay. So these are the three planes intersecting in the line for us. Correct. So that is how how the things are. So they intersect in the line, and that's the equation. And the equation of this line is two four zero plus k the parameter one minus three one. Okay. Now what you can do is you can also check whether you have the right answer or not. Correct. So let's check it out. So this is the point of intersection two four zero. So if I put two four, I get six with zero here, right? And two minus four is minus two. Correct. This is zero. And two times three is six. Four times five is twenty, and twenty plus six is twenty-six. Z is zero, so these places become zero. So the equations are verified. So that's the solution, and we can write solution is is a line R one, which is at two four zero plus parameter k one minus three one, where k belongs to real numbers. Okay, you should always write k belongs to real number because set of infinite points on a line is represented by the parameter k belongs to real numbers. Okay, I hope you understand the whole concept of uh, one solving steps to solve Gaussian elimination. This is not very extensive on that, but it just gives you an idea, right? And the steps to follow. The thing is, we should get these three zeros. That's very critical for us. In our process, we got all of them zero. Now this is always true. It shows that the intersection is aligned, correct? And with a parameter, we define. Z equals to k because z is always true, right? You could have put x equals to k and then solve for y and z also, but you know, or rather y equals to k. But it's customary to take this line as a solution for z, this for y, this for x. I hope you make sense to you because if you put x, you land up in complications. You can't do this equation solution, correct? The second equation is y and z, correct? So you can solve for v, y. So the idea is. From the last equation, always write down the solution for z. From the second, solve for y in terms of z, and from the first, solve for x in terms of y and z. Then you'll always get the correct answer without any problems. I hope you understand it. We'll take some more examples, and we will try to now understand different solutions. What do they represent graphically? Okay. Thank you.